Hello and welcome to the next in our study on women in the Bible. Uh, this week we're moving back to the Old Testament, but moving out of Genesis and moving into Exodus and looking at two women who were so integral to the life of Moses, who in turn was so integral to the early history of the Hebrews and certainly to those early books of the Bible. Moses stands really as a, a towering figure in Jewish history and therefore in Christian history as well. And these two women, I think, are really important parts of um, his narrative and make really vital contributions, therefore, to the overall <coughs> narrative that we have in the Bible. So the first woman is Moses' mother, Jochebed. Jochebed we see in Exodus chapter 2 and verse 1. Moses introduces his mother as the daughter of Levi. As he penned his nation's early history, he was careful to identify her family heritage. Um, the Levi tribe um, really became to be known as the priestly tribe. Uh, and that would have been the slot that it was placed into um, <clears throat> for the large part of, of Hebrew history. But until the lifetime of Amram and Jochebed, the name Levi connoted more violent revenge. If you read Genesis 34 verses 25 to 31, also Genesis 49 verses 3 to 7. Oftentimes, Hebrew wealth, uh, or other Hebrew thinking, equated wealth with sons and daughters. This harkens right back to the promise of God to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2. He's seen with um, <coughs> Abraham's wife Sarah, with Rachel and Leah, uh, with Elizabeth in the New Testament, um, certainly many others as well, that um, the inability to bear children uh, was a cause of great distress. And so it's really important to note the initiatives of Jochebed here. We read early on in Exodus chapter 2 that she conceived and she bore a son and she saw that he was beautiful. But due to <coughs> the oppressive regime that um, she was in and she bore a child in, um, that of the uh, Hebrews as they were effectively a slave nation inside that of Egypt after um, some 400 years before. Um, remember Joseph had settled the family in that region because of famine in Canaan and because of the ways in which... <coughs> And God had provided for the family and had um, ensured um, their survival, even though um, Joseph's own story was so convoluted and so difficult at times. Nevertheless, so we come forward at this time and we see the Hebrews um, in great servitude and under pretty... Um, difficult laws from the Egyptian leaders, the pharaohs, and the Egyptian people more broadly. So this is the environment that Jochebed's living in, that Moses is born into. And so in order for her child to survive, she took an ark and she put the child in it, again hearkening back to um, the salvation of God's people by Noah through an ark. These actions, I think, denote a fearless and a focused woman of faith. Her motivation and its results are clarified by the writer to the Hebrews and the New Testament book that you know, draws on Hebrew history and draws on the faith of specific characters. In Hebrews 11 verses 23 to 27 um, we see Jochebed making an appearance here. She circumvented the edict to destroy her baby, to place him in the Nile River 
was the law, according to Exodus chapter 1 and verse 22, to surround him with protection, including a watchful sister. Well, that was faith. Exodus chapter 2 and verses 3 and 4. It's really quite astonishing to comprehend the terror tactics of the ancient pharaohs. And maybe we can continue to see leaders who are towards the very evil of human behaviour continuing to wreak havoc in the populations of so many fellow humans. This was done from a long, long time ago. Idolatrous and corrupt these pharaohs held nothing but contempt for the mysterious God of their Israelite underdogs. Hatred, hostility, and hard labor were facts of life. Yet one woman soared <coughs> me, above the evil around her. God saw her heart, heard her prayers, and intervened on her behalf. Her fame lives on through the lives of her remarkable children. Numbers chapter 26 and verse 59. God honoured her steadfast purpose, using one of her sons to deliver the Hebrews from Egyptian servitude, and by appointing her other son, Aaron, as high priest. Her daughter, Miriam, became the leader of the Hebrew women, and Jochebed's entire tribal family was selected by God to lead the rituals of worship for his people. Jochebed models for contemporary women an infectious courage to fear God instead of people, and a firm faith in his promises and providences. The author of Hebrews records that Moses left Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king, Hebrews 11 and verse 27, and that his parents before him were not afraid of the king's command, Hebrews 11 and verse 23. The important thing is not so much who you are, but what you do to meet the challenges and the responsibilities that come. There's no doubt that Jochebed was not born into ideal circumstances and she was not bringing a child into ideal circumstances. Nevertheless, through inventiveness, <coughs> ingenuity and through trusting God, she was able to survive and thrive and in so doing, bring the saviour of her people to bear. Jochebed took her motherhood very seriously, nurturing her children in the Lord with conscientious devotion. Surely she must have been the chief influence under God in the preparation of these children for the great tasks God gave to each in leading his people out of bondage. And of course, as we've mentioned, one of those children was Miriam, Moses' sister. Miriam, clearly an intelligent child, became, with her brothers Moses and Aaron, a leader of the people of Israel. Her first appearance, babysitting her little brother besides the Nile River, demonstrates her keen mind. She volunteered to find a wet nurse for the baby when the Egyptian princess expressed her intention to adopt the child, thus allowing Moses' mother, Jochebed, to nurture him. More than 80 years later, God delivered his people from the bondage of Egypt, and after the miracle of crossing the Red Sea on dry land, Miriam led the women in dancing and singing as a celebration to God. She was clearly gifted as a natural leader and was considered the foremost of all the Hebrew women. 
being also gifted as a musician and a prophetess, according to Exodus chapter 15 and verse 20. She likely was included at the council table with her brothers, and Miriam, as Moses' older sister, may even have acted as a surrogate mother to Moses. There's no evidence in the text that she ever married. Most likely, as a single woman, she committed herself to building the nation of Israel. During the tumultuous days journeying across the desert, Moses' wife became a concern to Miriam. Whether this Ethiopian woman who had joined the group was Zipporah, or whether she was a second wife to Moses and Zipporah had passed away previously, we're not quite sure. Read Numbers chapter 12 and verse 1. But her presence was cause for criticism and jealousy from Miriam and Aaron. They were not concerned necessarily because of her colour, but simply because she was from a foreign land. They apparently discussed their feelings, concluding together that they, as leaders, were being slighted. Miriam's mistake was her sarcastic rejection of her brother's leadership. In anger, the Lord disciplined Miriam with instant leprosy, thus banning her from the camp. You read about this in Numbers chapter 12, verses 10 and 14. Because of the fervent prayers of her brothers, God restored her. But there's no evidence that her influence was again blessed of God. She died before reaching the promised land, according to Numbers chapter 20 and verse 1. This gifted woman left a caution for every female leader. God alone gives and removes both talent and importance. Miriam incurred God's displeasure when she allowed herself to challenge the authority God had given to Moses. She allowed jealousy and spitefulness to rob her of fulfilment in her later years. This is certainly a lesson we can learn, just as we can learn from the faith and fearlessness um, and wise <coughs> instruction that we see from Jochebed. Many thanks.